Hey, what's going on guys? Jolts here, back with another patch video. And today we got a surprise patch out of nowhere, so let's go over the changes now. Vault card number two is live, so if you have the director's cut, you will now have that. The theme for the vault card is going to be Welcome to Pandora. This new vault card is going to offer brand new cosmetic items, and also a few new legendary items. Just like the first vault cards, any way you earn XP, that's going to go towards the vault card too. And once you get enough XP doing challenges or whatever, you can level up your vault card and get that new stuff. Like I said, this vault card is going to be Pandora themed, so there's going to be 28 new rewards, and you can actually see at the bottom there, all four of the Vault Hunters are going to have themes from Tales from the Borderlands. Amara is going to have Sasha, Black is going to be Loaderbot, Zane is going to be Shade, and Moses is going to be Fiona. For the other cosmetics, we have more Echo skins, more weapon trinkets, more room decorations, one new weapon skin, and also four new legendaries. Now, those legendaries don't show us the new skins they're going to have on them, but we do know we're getting a new artifact, a new Torg Grenade, and two new Hyperion SMGs. I'm really curious about that artifact. What is it going to do? Finally, for the Vault Card stuff, it was mentioned that Vault Card number 3 is coming out later this year. Alright, patch changes. They added more bank SDUs for now 100 more spots. That is pretty nice because the bank can get crowded pretty fast. Here's a really good one. Remove the moving platforms and added air jumps and the final section of the Guardian Takedown. I don't know about you guys, but I can't tell you how many times I've fallen off those, so having reliable jump pads is going to make that way better. Thank you for that. They also patched in most of the previous hotfixes, so you don't have to stay online for those. They addressed a reported crash that can happen for Xbox Series X players that would join a PC player. Another crash has been fixed for people navigating the shift menu. They fixed a crash that could happen if you're playing Stadia and unblock or block a person. A crash has been fixed if you are quitting the game while using DX12 on PC. On PlayStation, people could get stuck on local only mode, so that has not been fixed. Also, if you're on PlayStation, if you get a matchmaking error 5, that should not be fixed and not happening anymore. They fixed a glitch that could happen if you're traveling to another map in a car. Sometimes the car would lose functionality. They added more language voiceovers for the Maya Funeral behind the scenes content. Fixed the Tyrant of Instinct from bugging out during the fight. And fixed a visual stutter that could happen on Xbox. Now there are a few other changes, but I didn't think they were worth mentioning because they are quite small. If you want to read up on those smaller changes, you can read it in the patch notes below. Moving on here to the UI fixes. They fixed fast travels that weren't properly functioning for some people on PlayStation. Updated the friends list for ship to not show placeholder names. Updated user ID information from online matchmaking. Synced vault card challenges on Stadia. Fixed vault card challenges from showing as complete even if you didn't do them. Removed the block players from the social menu. Addressed inventory drag and drop on PC. And quite a few other small things, but again, you can read those below in the patch notes if you want to. Moving on here, let's go over the character changes. Sentinel's static field augment will now return shield energy when doing shock damage to shields. Digiclone will now spawn with the correct amount of grenades. Zane's assassin one head will now appear correctly. Black can now put on an action skill if you respec. Yeah, that was kind of an odd one. It would be redded out so you couldn't equip anything, but now it should be fixed. All right, onto the gear changes. Artifacts with passives that boost shock or corrosive damage have been fixed. Before, they would also buff shock and damage too, and that should now not be a thing anymore. For the next three, these are going to be for Moe's. Three of her annoyance actually gave you bonuses that you weren't supposed to get. So the 160 splash annoyant for Moe's also gave you the 75% shield annoyant. That should not be removed. The next three mags annoyant for 33% reload and 67% accuracy or handling. That used to also give you 125% fire damage, but that has been removed. And the next two mags, 10% fire rate, 20% crit, also gave you the 125% fire damage. That has been removed too. All three of those annoyants weren't supposed to get double bonuses, so that's why they got fixed. Anyways, that's it for all the patch stuff, so let's go over the hotfix stuff. To apply your hotfixes, make sure you're playing online and set it to the main menu for a few seconds. After that, you should see a sign pop up behind your character saying hotfixes have been applied. Once you see that, you are good to go. Devil and Hellion creatures would sometimes release a painful screech. That should not be fixed. Both mini bosses that spawn during the Joey fight should count for the 100 bosses challenges. They added collision for a tree that you could walk through by Jabber Mogwai. They added the hose and oil can parts to COV heavy weapons. I'm pretty happy about that one, it is a pretty cool animation. And they increased the number of Iridium piles that spawn in the base game. Finally, we do have 5 weapon buffs. Embrace the Pain, more damage. The Chandelier, more damage. The Echo, even more damage. The Hive, more damage and more projectile speed. That was definitely needed. And Vasca's Death Grip, you guessed it, even more damage. Anyways, that's going to be it for all the patch and hotfix notes, so let me know below in a comment what you guys think about all these changes. I am looking forward to the Guardian Takedown being a little bit more manageable, and I'm also curious about the four new legendaries added to Vault Card number 2. What did they do? I want to know. 
And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and of course, if you did, then please be sure to leave a like, because that'd be awesome. And if you guys really enjoyed it, be sure to sub. You guys have a great day, and I will see you all later. Peace out.